Welcome to episode 252 of the Ross Boland Podcast, otherwise known as RBP 252, presented by Boland Media. I am your host, of course, Ross Boland, here today with uh, co-host producer extraordinaire Mike Moody, as well as co-host Mr. Anthony Johnson. Boys, are you excited for Christmas Eve tomorrow? AJ, you first. So I'm not as excited as I as I normally am, or as I should be. Oh. Here's something that I've noticed as Is I've got adulthood that's crushing you. Well, yeah, I'll explain. As okay. I've gotten older, older, I've noticed that, um, well, when you're a kid, you know, you get excited for Christmas on a like, different with, level, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. Um, even when you're in school, when you're a teenager and you're in high school, fair for, enough. Yep. For one, because you're out of school for like the goddamn three weeks. Yeah. That's plenty of time to get into the holiday spirit. Sure. And then also, you know, at that age when you're an adolescent, you don't have to deal with. Uh, you know, juggling a full time job, paying bills and shit. Pro- yeah, providing for a family and just you know, just all the stresses of the real world. You don't have to buy presents for anybody when you're a kid. Typically, yeah, the presents are just given to you. you. Yeah, you just accept them because you're a child. So you know, as a kid at that age, Christmas feels more magical, right? You know, yeah. And it as changes. you get older, that magic kind of fades. It changes a lot as you get older. Just like it's like all of the magic in the world when you're a small child that's killed off uh, by the time you reach adulthood. I'm just kidding. But Christmas in particular, the way you enjoy it changes. I think in part because of the buildup. When you're in school, there's that buildup, right? Because yeah. you got finals coming or you got into the semester or whatever the fuck. Well, sure. I don't well it's more than just Christmas. Works. It's like this break that I've been working yes. months and months to get towards. And it's like the end of your year. I'll give you like the difference now. For me, for example, Yeah. How do you approach there has this? been like no buildup. To Christmas this year for me because yeah, it's you just, just been work. work, 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 work. You almost forget about it. It's a, and it's just a totally different type of prep. Like it's not three weeks of me being like Christmas is almost here. And yeah. when you're an adult, like my parents. Bu- You get like a couple things, you sure. know what I'm saying? You get well, like what you want. I'm sure it's only a couple presents. Adult, adult shit. Well, you that's want, what I want. You want like all the latest gadgets and technology. See, here's the thing. Name one. run your parents. Drive. Name one. Name a gadget. What that you would want? Any gadget. Uh, a laptop. A I MacBook. have that shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a list. Okay, is my I forgot point. you got it like that. I'm so, sorry. no, but here, no, but I mean, it's relative, dude. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. I, I drive a 2005 Lexus. You okay. know what I'm saying? My balance. car costs less than this computer. It's all bro. about balance. Yeah, it's not balance. It's just preference. Yeah. I don't give a shit about certain things. I give a shit about certain things. I have a nice house. I don't give a fuck about my car. I got really nice shoes. I don't give a fuck about like normally a laptop, but this one just happens to be new. Well, that's for I, work. So the other know, one yeah. fell off the top of the shitty car. Yeah, remember? Yeah, on the highway. Call back to episode. Uh, what was that? Two something. Two, yeah. Point being. I don't have a list to give my parents to get excited about. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I don't know, like, as an adult, there aren't all these little toys and get, and shits that you want. Like, sure, for some people, it's like, you need, air, you want AirPods or something. Technology tends to be the easy go-to for adults, but in my case, technology, my career is technology-driven, so sure. I have a lot of the technology shit that I want yeah. already. That, that reminds um, me of a story from when I was a little kid. Can I share? Yeah, yeah. Real quick? Yeah. Uh, so when I was about nine or ten years old, uh, my parents had just gone through with a, a messy divorce, right? Okay. My parents divorced when I was young. Yeah. I was living with my mom, my mom and my sister, and we were living in a duplex in kind of a sketchy part of town, you know? It wasn't the safest place to live. In the H? Huh? No, not in Where the at? H. Well, I'm not from the H. I'm, yeah. from, I'm from right outside of Fort Hood, like okay, a little cool. small town. Gotcha. Um, but we were in this town. We were in like a sketchy part of town in a duplex. And uh, so money, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of money, to be totally honest with you. Right. Me, me growing up. So I remember one Christmas when I was that age, the only thing I got for Christmas was uh, a book and, like, a pack of socks. Okay. and That's a disappointing know, Christmas probably for a child. Yeah, exactly. And I, when my mom told me and she gave me those gifts, she was like, hey, money is tight this year. Mm-hmm. Like, this is, really, this is really all I can give you. Yeah. And, and I remember the look on her face. You know, she was, she was heartbroken. You know, she, she was... She was devastated because she wanted to give me so much more. She felt like I deserved so much more than that. Right. So at that age, as a kid, like what you just mentioned, it's hard to wrap your head around that. Because you don't, fact. you don't really know how it works yet. You feel entitled as a kid. You're like, hey, I want this. You know, Nintendo 64 is what right. I wanted. Right. I deserve it. I should get it. That's the way your mind works when you're a Dude, kid. It's amazing to me because I think most families. Even this is what's interesting. Even well, more well off than you were as a child. Yeah. Let's say, upper middle class family. Well, that's how your family was, right? 
Mm, your upbringing. I don't know what tax bracket we were in, but we were not rich. But you guys were, were we pretty poor. well off from what you said. No. Well off is definitely not the word I would use. Okay. Um, we were not poor, and we were not rich. We okay. were somewhere in the middle, and then I knew a lot of rich people. Sure. And didn't know any poor people when I was when I was a kid. Yeah. Okay, but then when I switched to public school, I knew a lot of poor people. Yeah. Didn't know very many rich people. Didn't know many people with money anymore. Gotcha. Um, but what was the, what were we talking yeah, about? Yeah, well, yeah, just to continue what I was saying. Yeah. So, I got that for Christmas, and as a kid, you know, obviously I was really disappointed. Any kid who gets a oh, book sure, and no. socks for Christmas, you're going to be pissed. I remembered my point. Oh, yeah, go it's ahead. It's relative in that I guarantee you families in every tax bracket have experienced a similar type of feeling. Now, it's different because when you have more, um, there's less weight to that type of disappointment. But yeah. I remember it as it's somewhere in the middle, not poor, not rich, very same type of Christmas where my parents had to explain to me, you know, this year, and my little brother, this year was really tough. Yeah. We didn't get very much stuff. Do you remember what you got exactly? No, and it was probably more than, you know what I'm saying? Like, what you got. Kind of like in the same. But in that vein, I was disappointed. Yeah. And I felt entitled to more. And it was almost the explanation of it. It was like, oh, well, what then what the fuck? Like, get off your ass. Yeah. Mom and dad. So it What the fuck? So it took me a while after that to really reflect back on it and realize or really learn you know yeah. the, the valuable lesson about it's not about what you receive for christmas you know it's about how you see really my mom had given me pl- more than enough more than i could have asked for you know sure. i had a roof over my head sure i had food i was never hungry she was your mom yeah and she, she gave fucking me, raised you she yeah. gave me plenty of love and affection she gave birth to your ass and i would choose those things over any amount of money or material item any day and yet the pressure is there for parents to perform for their kids on Christmas because, and I mean, look, that's the way our culture is set up, man. From the time you're little, you watch movies about Christmas and, the, and they're centered around the tree and the presents and like, that's the dream is like. Well, as a kid, you see that and you're like, yeah. oh, that's what Christmas is supposed to be. Yeah. A I giant wake up, tree and then you have like 12 presents. presents under the tree. Yeah. You wake up and you run downstairs. Yes. Wake your parents up and just rip open. You know, all these boxes, but and it's not like that for everyone. No, it's the not. The reality of it. And that's a beautiful point, AJ, is that it can get really easy to forget. It can be so easy to forget. It, like, your life, right? You're, all, you're living it. Yeah. You've got your Christmas in your head. Yeah. I've got my life, my Christmas in my head. Everybody's got their different Christmas. It, 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 your shit and everybody else's shit, not the same. And it can yeah. be so easy to forget that. You just roll into every yard this Christmas. I'm going to go home. I'm going to be in my mom's cool house with a nice Christmas tree and a good family dinner. We're going to have presents in the morning. We're going to have breakfast. We're going to watch a Christmas story for 24 straight hours. Like, not everybody gets to experience that. Yeah. In fact, most people don't. So when you know, you cru- I mean, for me, it's like cruising around Austin during the holidays. We have all the homeless people that we have. Yeah. And that's like the thing that kind of keeps me in check constantly. To remind, it's the importance of just keeping perspective and, let me, rem- let me ask you and this. remembering. Like, not everybody has it as good as you, or or, and a lot of people have it a lot better, and a lot of people have it a lot worse. And it's sort of that relativity thing that we always talk about. In regards to the homeless people, do you find yourself giving a lot more to them during this time of the year? Are yeah. you more, are you more inclined to you yeah, know, I'm more inclined. slide them a few dollars you know why, or if though, they want for some real? food or whatever? Because it's fucking freezing out there. Yeah, it is. It's not so much about well, I mean, like not, not, for Texas it is. I yeah, mean, for, no, well, for us yeah, it's cool. yeah, yeah. For, yeah. I'm sure everybody in well, the world. Well, I can only imagine like New York, Chicago, how brutal that gets. The homeless people who live out there. Surely they come, they like fly south. They migrate for the winter. south for the. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. surely. Yeah. I, I don't think they do. We're also I'm, friendlier I'm, than those people. So. I'm being mostly sarcastic, but yeah, to your point, dude. Yeah, the, like in the Northeast, the homeless up there, them them are hardened sons of bitches. Yeah. You've got to be a motherfucker to live. It's. 35, and I'm, that's how, when I say freezing in Austin, in below 50, yeah, it's cold to me. It's where I don't even want to get out of the house. Right, but the homeless here, they're not equipped to deal with that, yeah. just like we're not equipped to deal with it. So they're freezing their dicks off, and yeah, I'm more inclined to give money during this time of year as a result. The thing I keep finding myself, dude, this is such a fucking, nobody carries cash, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't carry money on me. I just have my credit card and my debit card. Never that's have it. cash. Literally, the only reason I have cash is days I'm going to pick up weed. Because you got to pay with cash. Sure. Well, that's not the case for me. But. They don't take credit uh, yeah. uh, in the illegal stage yet. Some, some do. Well. Um, it's just not, it's yeah, just not, it's just not uh, weed whenever it's right. charged onto their car. No shit. So I, every, like, I'll pull up next to somebody at a stoplight, a homeless person or whatever. And I'll find, I'll be like, damn, I, I wish I had some cash on me so that I could give this person stuff. But then when, the only time I have cash is 20s. Yeah. 
Giving a homeless uh, person so you're a in 20, that predicament, yeah. Yeah, because it's it's like, okay, is it irresponsible to give somebody with with nothing enough money to get them fucked up? I, like, are they going to take that 20 and go shoot it up? Yeah. Are they going to take the 20 and buy food? You don't know. You don't but know. The thing I've come to is like, yeah, that's on them. I'm going to just try to provide somebody with enough money to where, like, I've handed out 20s to where I'm like, and this isn't a stunt. It's just, I don't really care yeah. all that much about about <laughs> cash in particular. But, like, you hand them a 20, and it's like, are they going to go use that for positive? Or are they going to fuck their day up? And it's that's on them. You're giving somebody the opportunity to change. Now, some people disagree with this. Some people say, like, don't give homeless people that type of money, especially if they're, like, clearly addicts. Yeah. In which case, if you can tell the dude's tweaking, of course don't hand him a 20. You got to feel that out. Like, I'm ta- I'll feel, like, you know what I'm saying? I'll see, like, a mom who's, like, 45 with a dog, and I'm like, here's 20 bucks. Here's I'm not talking about seeing a dude who's, like, literally hitting the crack pipe and handing him a 20. That'd be fucking stupid. Yeah. Something that my dad likes to do is... Uh these homeless people, they'll have signs. They'll come up to you and they say they want money for food. Yeah. My dad will be like, all right, let's go to so-and-so restaurant. I'll get you whatever you want to get. And they'll be like, no, nah, man. Nah, man I mean, I just, just give me some money. Give like, me a six I'll, pack, I'll, bro. I'll, I'll get some food for myself. I just want some cash. See? And it's like a quick way to see, like, oh, okay, well. It's a test. Yeah. And if they're like, cool, I'll get in. Then you're like, all right, here's 10 bucks. Go get your shit. Yeah. But if they're like, man, fuck you. Then you're like, you just Because if they really want some food, they'll be like, hell yeah, let's go to McDonald's. Like, Open I'm up, not, baby. I'm not, I'm not passing up on that. Hell no. Yeah. Which is the strange, but that's the Even difference. me as someone I mean, who's not homeless, if you told me that right now, I'm like, yeah, let's go. Let's I don't have to pay for anything. Yo, if I'm walking anywhere, grocery store. A Big Mac on you with oh, fries and a drink. If you pull up next to me and offer me food, I'm probably not going to. Well, it depends what you, you know. If you're looking like you might fuck me up. Yeah. But if you're looking like a decently friendly person, let's go get some food. Free food? I'm like that with alcohol also. If I'm at the bar. I'm like I, I know I've noticed this a lot. At the bar, a girl will get a drink or a bunch of drinks and they w- they don't want to finish it because you know girls don't always finish their drinks. No, they don't they don't need so as much. They'll come up to me and they'll be like, Here, finish this. Oh I'll god. Like, okay. I'll I'll drink. AJ, maybe, maybe that's something that happens in college. AJ, towns. this is dangerous. This is how you get day raped, AJ. It is, but it's like I don't know if it's a if it's if it's a full cocktail. I don't. I can. I Here's don't know. your key. It's, it's hard to say no to that. If you're a grown man like AJ, you can make that decision. If you're a young woman, never ever 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 for any reason drink anything that's handed to you. Plus, if a hot girl gives you a drink, it's it's hard to say no. Ah, you're gonna be good. Yeah. Glass, of, unless she's a serial killer, in which case then you get I mean, murdered by a hot serial killer and you're good. I, I'm fine with going out that way. I am too. Preferably via choking. Um. But yeah, if you're, if you're a chick, don't be don't be drinking. Even a glass of water. Don't drink anything handed to you at any point your whole life if you're a woman. It's just the rules. Mike, you excited for Christmas Eve? I'm excited for the uh, same dark colored off-brand polo shirts my mom gets me every year. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> that kind of just rides me through the summer. There it's you go. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's great. Right on. All right. Yeah, Christmas is definitely my number one holiday still. It will never be Surpassing dethroned. Surpassing Thanksgiving? It is. It is. And here, I know that's pretty close, I'll give right? you my reasoning. They have to be neck to neck. They are. Uh, well, here, here, here's my here's my lineup. It's the for for Christmas in particular. It's the combination of the music, the food, the movies, the decorations. You know, the family time, uh, the reason for the season, all that good shit. No other holiday, in my opinion, carries the quality in all categories like Christmas does. Like Thanksgiving is has great. elements of that food, family, but also murder. Yeah, okay, yeah, you forget about murder. You forget the murder. And trash decorations. Like, totally shit fashion choices by the pilgrims. Yeah. Think about your Thanksgiving decorations. What is it, like, hay? I mean, we don't decorate for Thanksgiving, so I don't Pump- know what you're... Pumpkins. What do white people put out? Hay? Yeah, pumpkins. that's something that white people do. Little pumpkins, we don't, we don't hay. Little gourds. Yeah. I don't think anybody but white people even celebrate Thanksgiving anymore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> everybody else is like, this is... This has gotten weird. Oh, us Mexicans celebrate Thanksgiving. Oh, good. Thank yeah, God. Sure. Oh, have you ever been to a Mexican Thanksgiving? No. It's got to be Dude, better than the white people Thanksgiving. They now. will feed you until you're about to explode. Yeah, we never stop eating. There's, do you all do murder, though? There's a never-ending supply of food. I don't know about the murder. Can you speak to that, Mike? I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, we do murder. Oh, okay. tight. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad you all kept that part of it. It's a very important essential piece to the Thanksgiving puzzle is the murder. <laughs> <laughs> you need it. But anyway. We, we understand- murder all the whites. <laughs> <laughs> Kill Whitey, Thanksgiving, fantastic holiday. Love it. It's in my top five. I'm just giving you an example of how Christmas has it all where other holidays lack. Thanksgiving's decorations and fashion are shit. Okay? Um, Halloween, great costumes, candy, but is it good food, food? No. 
No. Well, I don't know what food you eat on Halloween other than like candy corn and Reese's cups. Right? There's no you don't associate like a good Actually, food. I hate candy corn. I don't know why I said I that. I hate candy corn too. Yeah. Who are these people out there? Candy- Reese's cups though. I'll eat an entire like industrial sized bag of those. I've been going in on Reese's like the last couple weeks. The 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 little miniature cups or you get like the full on I tried those mini cups. They're okay, but I'm a full on guy. Yeah. I need the full. I get the three pack, you know. You ever got the the giant ones? Yeah, the, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I get those big ass king oh. size motherfuckers <laughs> and take them down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just don't want the little ones. They're too. There's too. Here's the problem with those little. I, I, first of all, I think those are new. I had never seen those until this past couple weeks. The bag filled with the little Reese's that are like uh, solid. They've almost. been around for a while. Okay, maybe I'm just new to yeah. them. I kill the whole bag. That's yeah. a problem. I can't put the bag away. What am I gonna do? I, then I then I gotta go get a thing out of a drawer to like fucking a clip to put over the bag to like then put it in the pantry or some shit. Not fuck that. I'm eating the whole thing, and then I feel like shit. Yeah. So I need the three cups. I'm good. I'm good. But Halloween, no. There's no good food associated with that. And the costumes are really only fun from like 18 to 25, and then it stops being sexy again. And then suddenly you hit 30, and you're handing out candy instead of getting candy, and it's just a nightmare. Uh, Fourth of July. Celebrating freedom and opportunity in America, probably my number two now. Okay. Even in front of Thanksgiving, for real. Uh, oh, number two? I would yeah. never guess that. No, okay. I mean it's like it's it, fantastic music. It's absolutely horrific, but it's just awesome fashion. Like nobody wears anything but the stupidest American flag stuff. And I it, love it. it. The fashion on the fourth is it's great. It's incredible. I love it. Family, you got fireworks, hot dogs, and burgers. So Barbecues. The, the food is there. Yeah, you've got the food Some element. Some of my favorite foods. So really, that's the only holiday to me that t- truly holds a candle to Christmas is the Fourth of July because it has it all as well, just to a lesser degree. What about this one? I'm gonna throw one at you. In my opinion, yeah, go for it. Valentine's Day. Which I'm sure we'll do an episode about when that day comes. Oh, I'm certain we will. Uh, I think we've done a couple. You know, you know what day. we should do for Valentine's Day? Yeah. We should invite uh, Serena to come back up here for another Valentine's Day episode. I believe intern Serena will be here for Valentine's in March, day? though. Oh, I do okay. not think she will be St. here. St. Patty's Day episode. If I'm not mistaken, intern Serena will be here in March. Valentine's Day doesn't even crack my top ten, I don't think. I'm yeah, putting, I'm not a lovey-dovey guy either. I'll put, like, well, first of all... Just to reverse course for a second, can I just say I'm not a New Year's Eve guy? For okay, the most part. I forgot about that one. Yeah, but what, you know what? We'll trash well, New Year's well, Eve I'm another sure, day. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure the reason why is because of the alcohol aspect of it. We don't have to do a deep dive into it. I wasn't a New Year's Eve guy even before I quit drinking. Oddly oh. enough, but yeah, yeah we'll that's talk- pretty. That's pretty much what the entire holiday is about. It is just drinking yourself into oblivion, and then you feel like asshole on the first day of the next year. Which is the stupidest strategy of all time. It's the thing about New Year's Eve. I'm sorry, we've set me off. Well, it's it's because, too late. I can't it's, go back. Well, it's because everyone has the day off. So it's like, what else are you going to do but just get hammered but and be hung over? What? Why, as humans, do we feel it is necessary to set ourselves up for failure so constantly? That is the definition of setting yourself up are for failure. Are you talking about drinking in general? Or no, on, I'm talking on about you go, in, you go into an entirely new calendar year. The whole thing's supposed to be about having a fresh start yeah. and a fresh perspective and revelations and resolutions, and you go in with like twenty percent brain power, puking and shitting and 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 pissing out of your ass. Yeah, that's not how you want to start the the, Why? New, the new decade. It just doesn't. In this in this case, it's a fucking decade. Yeah, twenty twenty. You're gonna wake up twenty twenty and start that bitch wanting to die, like needing a Xanax. Fuck that. Fuck well, how, that. Uh, well, how would you start your twenty twenty? What would the you way do? I'm literally going to start it. Not hung over his balls and dying, but listen, it's I get it. It's a fun ass. It's a fun celebration. You black out and forget that, yeah, you, we, that you shit the bed dude, all year long. We survived another decade. That's the celebration, and that's we're what alive. It, we're here. We're yes, alive. We standing on this earth. We did it. We're still here. There's that's, a lot of people that we've lost over these past ten years. Also, that you got to appreciate the people you lost throughout the year, the decade, whatever. As well, so I get the re- there are reasons New Year's Eve can be done correctly. I just am saying I believe most of us do it. Wildly incorrectly. Oh well, sure. At yeah. This point. I'm, yeah, I won't disagree with that. The people that we, we, I've been one of these people copping a hundred and twenty dollar ticket to go to so, some hotel and do open bar with a hundred and fifty uh, other people who who all want to die. Yeah, that's miserable. <laughs> I've done that a few times. You don't drink the money's worth of alcohol, and then when you get to the point where you're trying to, you puke somewhere, and then you go home and you cry. Yeah, that's one hundred and fifteen bucks. Fuck that. Do you know how much beer you can buy with that money? That's the thing that I never understood. Why do people got to feel all fancy? Put on a tuxedo, go to this thing, drink champagne. Motherfucker, $115 worth of alcohol? You could drink for a month if you play your cards right. It's like 20 boxes of Keystone. Fuck out of here. Crazy. Anyway, Christmas is king. (laughs) And it (laughs) is. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> 20 bucks is a Keystone. Yeah, no, and for it real. Is, it is upon us. By the way, I was a Keystone guy before I was a Natty guy. I need to say that. I was a Keystone light guy, then a Natty light guy. All of us who played beer pong were Keystone guys. And then I drank so much of it that I had to stop entirely. Uh, it is upon us. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve, so today we wanted to begin the celebration with some holiday happy segments, and we've gotten through uh, one. So far, RBP 252 is brought. That wasn't even a segment; it was the intro. RBP 252 <laughs> is brought to you by Lisa, makers of the most comfortable mattresses in the entire universe. Your mattress, the most important thing you will ever purchase for your home, right in front of your living room TV. That's the second most important purchase, in my opinion. It doesn't matter if you're in a big ass house or you're grinding in a studio apartment. You need a fantastic bed for your body and your mind to rest every single night. That is paramount, and Lisa knows it. They know how important rest is to a better life. Lisa is the foundation of a healthier, happier you. And to Lisa, a bed is more than just a place to sleep. It's a place for relaxation and rest. I've been sleeping on their most advanced luxury hybrid mattress made with premium foams and springs for enhanced pressure relief with edge-to-edge -edge support for a few years now. Most comfortable bed I've ever laid eyes or body on. The hybrid, thoughtfully designed with the best of both worlds. If you've gone through this whole year, all of 2019, sleeping on the same old bed, waking up in the morning, semi-rested, looking down at your mattress like, what are you? Where are you from? Why are there all these stains on you? You disgust me. I disgust myself. It's time to make a change. Go into 2020 with a new bed. The best bed. The only bed you will ever want to sleep on ever again from Lisa. Get yourself a hybrid. Lisa, a fantastic company. They donate one mattress for every 10 they sell through organizations that work in causes like foster care prevention. Having donated more than 33,000 mattresses through more than 1,000 nonprofits at this point. Lisa mattresses are made in the USA. In-home delivery and setup is available. Financing is also available. Do not miss out, RVP gang. Live healthier. Live happier by resting deeper in 2020. Order today and get 15% off any mattress. 15% off any mattress at Lisa for a limited time when you go to lisa.com slash RBP. You got to use the URL. You got to use the promo code RBP. That's L-E-E-S-A dot com slash RBP. Promo code RBP. Keep in mind, you also get a 100-night risk-free trial plus free shipping and returns. If you're new to our show, the Ross Boland Podcast. Almost every episode is broken down into segments, which you can find with time cues below in the description. Now, some episodes may have a special guest or a special topic and be an exception to that rule and be less segmented as a result. Or it might just be an episode where we go off the rails, like RBP 251. We did basically half of a segment in an hour and a half. We did it, though. We did it, though, we AJ, it. and that's what matters. But typically the idea is we segment the shows, we timestamp all the different topics so you can consume at your own pace based on your work or school or whatever schedule rules your life. You do not have to have listened to a single one of the preceding episodes in order to enjoy RBP 252. But if you like today's show, you got 251 backlogged episodes to soak in and enjoy when you got the time. So get in there and have at it. Some announcements. First off, I'm a professional Apex Legends player now. Uh, if you would like to witness my, my uh, incredible abilities in action, twitch.tv slash boss Roland. Hey, B-O-S-S. R-O-L-E-N. Thank you very much. I appreciate it greatly. Uh, yesterday on the stream, by the way, we gave away a Liquid IV package that had a pair of AirPods in it, liquidiv.com. Uh, the code is RBP. It might be Ross. Try both, Ross or RBP. Anytime you're on a sponsor page and you're like, what's the code? It's one of those. Ross, R-O-S-S, or RBP. Now be careful with them shits, though, because if some other dickhead has the stolen our initials for our code and then they get credit or something, I'm going to be furious. But the point is this. I gave away some AirPods. We gave away a bunch of the we new RBP AirPods? merch. Oh, yeah, baby. We gave away a... We gave, we, oh, we're shit. doing it. We're doing it for shizzle. Doing holiday Twitch giveaways. It's no joke up on there on twitch.tv slash boss roll. And we're having a lot of fun. We had a six-win session the other night. We've been, we've been doing work. If you like Apex Legends, great. You're going to love the stream. But if you don't give a shit about video games, fine. It doesn't matter. It's really about chatting with... The, it's a small community, right? The, it's a small group of the bigger group that listens to this show. Getting to enjoy that smaller community, it's all about that, asking questions, enjoying the chat, and really we've got a Discord server, the RBP Discord with all these gamers in it, it's a lot of fun if you play video games, if you like Twitch, if you enjoy watching gamers, or if you just love RBP and want to hear more of me and me a lot of the time high and making jokes, twitch.tv slash boss rolling. Happy you know, birthday. You know what, Ross? What's up? Not to cut you off. No, no worries. Those those Twitch streams, mm -hmm. you can say that they're more like... Uh, like intimate episodes of RBP that, a little are, that bit. are interactive. Oftentimes what we'll do is have the viewers ask questions. Yeah. And then we will answer those questions between games. So you end up getting like these little almost mini podcasts out of it. It's a lot yeah. of fun. And they're live. It's a very cool way to experience the show. Shouts to everybody watching on twitch.tv slash boss rolling right now. I appreciate y'all 
especially those of you who have been supporting the stream over the past month. We had a dude the other day pop on and spend $1,000. Who? Some dude. Big his spender. Na- his name was Sicario with a K, no C. The Sicario. You've seen the movie, right? He was a yeah, great you movie. Yeah, Watch out for AJ, him. AJ, $1,000. Yeah. The dude came into the stream and gave out 200 subscriptions. They're five bucks each. He gave out 200 to random followers just out of the goodness of his holiday heart. Yeah. That's a thousand dollars. So can we were we, like, bro, what's your deal? Can we can we call that day um Day of El Soldado? Yeah, we can. Mm-hmm. The the sequel? Yeah. I still I've never seen the, the oh, sequel. Oh dude, you gotta. The sequel? I mean it's good. It's good, but it's not as good as the original. Well, sure, but the original I don't know how much you like the original. I thought it was badass. The sequel's like, a lot more like let's just kill everyone. It's like really bloody. I'm kind yeah. of in for that though. Yeah. Like John Wicky style? Uh, I'm nope. aware it's John Wick. I put the yeah. Y on the end. I was for wondering why. Okay. The sake of uh, John. Hey, did you know John Wick esh esque? Yes. Speaking of John Wick, do you know, did you know that the the next sequel and the Matrix sequel are coming out on the same day? I did. I read this. Keanu Reeves Day. Is Keanu Reeves? It's Bill and who, Ted who, Three coming who out is that doing day too. That? Nobody is doing that. <laughs> That's unheard of. I read that and I was like. Okay, well, this is like, I mean, the jokes are all obvious. Best day, Keanu Reeves day, Keanu clearly crushing it. Yeah. Uh, but has anybody ever had that before? Ever? No, I don't think Two anyone's ever done that before. Blockbuster A-list franchises on the same day? Yeah. That's some crazy shit. What does he do that day? Are you going to watch both Yeah. on the same day? I feel like you have nah, to. I don't know if I'll watch them on the same day. No, you day. have to. That's what he intended. That's what Keanu it's intended. It's probably a certain order. You probably have to watch the John Wick one first. Yeah. And then Matrix. You must do There's what Keanu science. intended. Look, whatever Keanu intends, I will do. What if he pops up on the screen and he's like, thank you for watching uh, Matrix. Today. Here's John Wick. No. What if it's just like one marathon? He just lumps them both together in the one movie. <laughs> I will only go it's to like that if Bill long. and Ted 3 comes out that day as well. Now, that, would, that would be insane. I'm okay. down for that. All of us above the age of 30 here, we all are familiar with Bill and Ted. Yeah. Okay, we're all familiar. No children know anything about Bill and Ted. Why is no. that? Why is it that Bill and Ted, among uh, Google it if you don't know what we're talking about, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure was well, it such, came out. It came out in the eighties. Sure, but it was so popular. At one point, AJ, there was a fucking cereal, and I know this because I got that well, cereal. I had, I had the video game. I had. The, you remember the the Nintendo game? Yeah, but yeah. Dude, I I had. One I watched of the... the Fox live action series. What? I didn't without even know they had that. without you know what's his name, uh, Keanu Reeves or or the, the other guy. guy. Who's, yeah, I, don't know. I had the phone booth. Toy. Yeah. Didn't they go into a phone booth to start the adventure? Yeah. yeah. The f- uh, the phone booth came in the cereal. Oh, that's, that's a, tight. It's tight until you think, what the fuck's an eight-year-old going to do with a toy phone booth? Fucking pretend you're Bill and Ted. Yo, you want to hear some crazy shit? Or this is random. Doctor Who. We're going to derail. My kitchen growing up, all right? Normal size house, couple bedrooms. Uh, you know, my parents' bedroom down the hall. My brother and I had bedrooms, and we had a guest room. Um, but like a normal fucking house. Not a big house. Sure, yeah. We had a kitchen probably about the size of this studio room, maybe a little bit bigger. And the whole kitchen at the top was lined with, what, what is that called? What is that, what is that shit called, Mike? Linoleum? Crown molding? Crown molding, oh, okay. yeah. Okay, crown molding at the top, right? That, that white people and, and, and people get inside, not just white people. Crown molding has nothing to do with being white at all. I don't know why I'm trying to steal sure that Sure it does. <laughs> it does a little, it's, you know what it is? It's saying crown molding. That's white. Yeah. Only white people go, yeah, we're shopping for crown molding today. It, Are you it, talking about the stuff on the ceiling? No, man. It's the See the white trim before the ceiling? The layer that's like... Bet- oh, oh, okay. That's yeah. crown molding. I didn't know there was a name for that. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It's, it's only white people say it. So we had crown molding that like there was a... It had a shelf to it, but only about, you know, three inches deep. Sure, yeah. It couldn't have been that. Yeah. And we stat all the way around the kitchen, right? And I was obsessed with fast food and... Cereal, like yeah. all children, McDonald's and shit, and well, toys. also like as you are now, as I am now, yes, uh, very fair, very fair point, and toys and shit, and what, what? Yes, that is a very fair point. I eat cereal every night. It's a really weird thing. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's getting weird. Um, my life is just is just is is not going the way I planned. It's beautiful. It's just ridiculous. My whole <laughs> kitchen was filled, the whole lining, with toys from cereal boxes and McDonald's. Okay, I'm talking hundreds of toys. My mom allowed me and my little brother to stack all the way around the entire ceiling of our kitchen. So you'd see like Ninja Turtles, random Bill and Ted shit, a fucking phone booth, whatever the fuck they gave away. Do you away. still have those? No. Because you know, they're worth money now. Yes. Those are collectibles. AJ, if my mom had kept the shit that I had when I was a kid, we'd be rich. We wouldn't even have to be here right now. We there would wouldn't be no be, podcast. There would be no RBP. If mom had just kept the goddamn toys, mom, 
This is the thing that will always get on my mom for. She's just really good at tossing out shit that she doesn't care about. Yeah, my mom I too. cared about those Ninja Turtles. Anyway, it got so gross though, dude. So by the time I'm like 14, 15, 16 years old, right? Yeah. The kitchen collection has gotten, it's out of control. It is the whole kitchen surrounded at the top. And I wish I had a picture so I could show you all. I feel like people are listening like, crown molding, what the fuck? But, so I would get up there like, you know, one day when I was high, 17 years old. And I was like, man, these toys have been up here. For years, this is crazy. Get up here and play with these toys. See which one I want to fuck with today. They had gotten so much of that. You ever left something for so long that didn't get dusted? Yeah. The dust like turns into this sticky substance. Yeah, it's like caked onto it. Yeah, yeah. Whatever that is was so layered on all these toys. That's why they got tossed. Yeah. Because at some point, my mom went to bag them up and was like, "Oh, fuck this noise." And just went to the dumpster. Yeah, it became a, a safety concern. You, cause the, your, no, your health was in danger. Nobody was up there dusting these toys. Yeah. And so you, well, who's it, gonna do that? I don't know. You know, not me, not not me, not the maid. Maids don't touch crown molding. That's a rule. Everybody knows that. Um, I don't know what the point was. We're in a, we're in the announcements section, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. You're about to start the announcements oh, actually, Twitch, just to get us back on track. Twitch.tv slash boss rolling. Happy birthday to Wade Elsisser. I believe that's how I say your last name. E L S E S S E R. Very cool last name. January second birthday coming up. I appreciate you, dude. Thanks for listening. Twenty twenty holds different shit for us both. Shouts to Turner Donlin for the mantis shrimp tip. He was a uh, the inspiration for our animal of the week, the mantis shrimp last ah. week. And I forgot to give Turner his props. Follow us on Instagram at the Ross Bolin Podcast, where every day we fill up our story with photos and videos sent in by you, our listenership, otherwise known as the RBP Gang. We're also on Twitter at Ross Bolin Pod, and you can find us on Facebook if you're the middle-aged aunt of one of our listeners. Two amends to make today. President Abraham Lincoln did not enjoy retirement. Uh, one more amend, so four amends. An amend to an amend. Richard Nixon did not enjoy impeachment, and the population of China is 1.427 billion First segment, Mike hey, wait, get the hey, stuff wait, to win. Well, what on. the fuck, AJ? I want to make an announcement, too. Christ. Well, it's, it's, it's pretty cool, actually. It's Mike was gearing up to throw the music on and everything. I never know when to jump in. You know, I got I to, gotta, like, oh, I'm pace just, myself. Fortunately, you can do whatever you want. But anyway, uh, I have a pretty cool, like, tidbit of information that's important to this date. Or, or yesterday, really. But, okay. But today. Uh, it's the 21-year anniversary of the sophomore album by DMX. Oh, flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. Wow. He, here's why that's important. Okay, I'll give a little backstory. X is gonna back give it to you. X is gonna give it to you. So, DMX dropped his debut album. It's in, dark and hell is hot. Yeah, in May 1998, and obviously it did numbers. It shot up to the charts. It went like four times platinum, right? Okay. So the co-president. Wow. Yes, yeah, six hundred seventy thousand units. Its first week. Yeah. Oh wait, that's no, flesh well, of my no, blood. Yeah. I was yeah gonna, sorry. I was sorry. Go ahead, AJ. Jumped ahead of sorry, me. Sorry. Sorry. So the co-president of Def Jam, he was so impressed by those numbers from the debut album, he went up to X and he was like, he was basically like, yo, I will give you a million dollars if you record another album by the end of this year. And so X was like, okay, like I'll, I'll do it. So he went to the booth. I think over the course of a month, he recorded his sophomore album, right? What? And it was produced by Swiss Beats. You, know, you know Swiss Beats? Of course. He Alicia actually, Keys, a uh, husband. He actually wanted to produce uh, DMX's debut album, but he was actually in high school at the time. Ah. And his uncles told him, like, hey, we want you to focus on school and your grades. We don't want you working on this album. So, anyway, he produced this uh, sophomore album. He dropped it, and it did numbers, too. Yeah. It went straight to number one. That was the 670,000 units its first week. And, dude, what's crazy about that is this is before the time of streaming yes. and digital music. There were 600,000 people that went to the store and physically bought his CD, which, which I think is an incredible feat. So for those of y'all who don't know, for those of y'all who are under the age of 25, probably, streaming numbers in, in, the, in the days of like platinum and gold records, right? Yeah. Their shit, they don't have any context for this. They have no clue how this works. And there's a Jay-Z line in one of the songs that uh, he's done recently where he's like, uh, oh, on on uh, 444 actually, where he says yeah. inflating numbers like we're supposed to be happy about this. Yeah, because you get all these Spotify streaming numbers, one billion streams, ten trillion streams, or whatever. But they're getting paid like pennies on the stream off yeah. whatever the like you know fractions of a cent of whatever. This is not the way things used to go back in the day, where you'd go to you know warehouse music or blockbuster. I went to um music F-Y-E. or uh, yeah, there was all kind. There was a handful. Hastings. Man, there was good shit. Hastings was one for yeah, sure. That, Hastings that was one was, of my go-tos. Dude, is Hastings one we have in San Marcos? 
No, we don't have. I don't think we have a Hastings. I think Hastings went out of business, didn't they? Did it? Damn, I wonder. Or if a we lot, had, a lot of them went out. Of maybe business. we had. Yeah, one they're when gone. I was there. Or they're gone. Completely. Oh shit! Okay, yeah. Did they have toys and they shit got too? Blockbuster. Yeah, for sure. Okay, it was definitely Hastings that we had in San Marcos when I was there, and it was my favorite store. They had books, they had records, they had toys, and they had video games. Yeah, all things that you love. Yeah, and then and you're telling me that doesn't exist anymore though. Yeah, that's unfortunately. To get back to your point though, yeah, back then. If an artist went platinum, that was a really, that really, mean, that really mean, big that deal. That means they they actually sold like one million, a million records. physical albums. Yes, like a million people went to the store and bought the album. That's incredible. Which is nutty. So four times platinum, <laughs> that means four million people. So yeah, when you look at like albums, that's, that's insane. When if you, you try to wrap your head, but around but if you it. look at albums that went diamond back in the day, like every Michael Jackson album or like yeah. Eminem's old albums, that's selling ten million records physically. Yeah. Not all I have to do is go to Spotify and stream it. No, you have to get out, get off, off your, your ass. couch, drive to the store, <laughs> buy a fucking CD player and yeah. the CD. You don't think about that. Yeah, there's go a, lot home. Of other, a lot of other costs that go into it. That's some crazy shit. 670,000 units for an album its first week would be like one of the most successful albums of the year by far. So here's the thing. He accomplished that, right? Yes. And by doing that, he was able to have two number one albums in the same year. Wow. And there are only two other hip-hop artists who have ever done that in history. Wow. Tupac and Jay-Z. Okay, so Tupac. And that's, that's an elite trio to be in. Tupac did it with uh, in 96 with All Eyes on Me. And, and the other album was uh, uh, posthumously after Yeah, the died. Don Columinati, the Seven died. Day Theory, which doesn't really count to me. Yeah. That was the Machiavelli deal. So DMX so to me. So real, but Jay-Z, though, you can, his is legitimate. To be in that same category as Jay Z, DMX, you know? DMX. Oh, sh- I'm not even seeing Hove credited on the thing that I'm reading. It just says straight up the only other person was Tupac, and I'm not even going to count that because the Columinati, the Seven Day Theory is not a Tupac album. Well, D- Jay Z is in there too. I forgot which two albums there they were. But I wonder. I wonder. That's he's crazy. He's in there also, as well as other artists too, like Led Zeppelin. There's like some other artists in there too. I think there's five total. It's that, also that have ever done that. It's also crazy because I'm like almost positive that it's Dark and Hell is Hot and then Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood in '98. First of all, if you remember 1998, DMX. And DMX yeah, he was music like, videos. He was, like the, dude, yeah. he was like the biggest artist on the planet. Yeah, dude. And then I watched it, a video of Woodstock at that year, and it was just. And then live at Woodstock, his album swarm came of out. White people, they were singing along, man. In they're, in the, they're in the mosh pit. Just. In '99, but then that was it, wasn't it? Like, did he ever do another album? Yeah, dude, he did a lot of albums after that. Did he? Because he still had the albums later where you had hit singles like "X Gonna Give It to You," "Party Up." Like the, what, he, X gonna give oh, it to you. Oh, was that from and then there was X that, that dropped yeah, dude, all those? Yeah, dude, he has a whole catalog. Okay, so he did a bunch of other dog it's shit. A, it's just his fame kind of those slowly were the dipped two. off. Like that's when he peaked is during that time. I mean, yeah, but he's had steady hits throughout his career. But my whole point with that is, I just want to say that you know, obviously we know the dude is unhinged. You know, he he struggles with mental health serious, like many of us. Serious issues now, yeah. But we have to acknowledge that he is a rap legend. Absolutely, and we, and we should give him the respect that he deserves. Dude, it's it's funny you bring that up, AJ. It's the reason that so many people in the hip hop community give um, DMX credit because he was one of the figureheads in rap for years, one of the biggest, hottest rappers on the planet. Yeah, he just very quickly derailed into like smoking crack and like running people over with his car. Sure, yeah. So you forget about the the music he put out, but he was very talented at one point. Yeah, Rough Riders Anthem, dude. Yeah. Dude, he was in movies. He was in like a couple action. Oh, movies. did you guys ever see that Chris Rock movie Top Five? No, people bring oh, this yeah, shit yeah, up yeah. to me all the it's time. It's great, and Chris Rock ends up in jail, and he just hears a noise like, Ugh, and it's Ugh. X. Yeah. He's like, well, what the fuck is that Ugh. noise? And next cell, it's DMX. Wow, DMX, what you doing in jail? I'm always in jail. Yeah, that was <laughs> God a great movie. damn, dude. Okay, yeah. Um, X Gonna Give It To You was from Cradle to the Grave in 2003. Yeah, which is also a movie that he was in. I Where believe. the Hood At was from Grand Champ in 2003. So it went, looks like he he tried to recreate this magic and party up from And Then There Was X. Yeah. Y'all gonna make me lose my mind. Yeah, how you gonna forget that one? Up in here. And then he up actually her. did. Yeah. Then he actually he, yeah. lost up, his mind. Up, up in her. Up in her. Excuse me, not here. True words have never been spoken. Hell, we got a little DMX segment yeah, off. Yeah, I just want to throw that in there. Just, you know. Wikipedia little... DMX when you're high. Did not see yeah. that coming, but now. A little, little miniature Wikipedia. Absolutely. Fuck yeah, dude. Respect to DMX. Respect DMX. And now, our first segment Stuff to Wikipedia when you're high. Mike, hit the music. Grab your light. This is Stuff to Wikipedia when you're high. <laughs> To 
today's stuff to Wikipedia when you're high is Stanislav Petrov is a human being. Okay. That's his name, Stanislav. This story is batshit, and I have never heard it, and I do not Wait, know is how. It, is it Christmas related? Is it going to bum us out? No, nah, it's Christmas related. Okay. Yeah, trust me. Is there murder yeah, here? No. Nah, uh, your last, your last story. one was just about a man killing his entire family. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you ruin my Yuletide cheer, man. <laughs> Why was that? Why was that? A I was like, this is sad. Yeah, I kept waiting for it to like take a turn, and it was like, yeah, so he just kills everyone. <laughs> what the fuck? There was no lesson. It was just like, this guy was an asshole. Anyway, uh, Stanislav Petrov, okay, who died May 19th of 2017, just a couple years back, which is why I'm pretty astonished that I've never heard about this guy. He was a lieutenant colonel of the Soviet Air Defense Forces and played a key role in an event that I was also unfamiliar with, or maybe I learned about at some point and forgot, which is entirely possible, the 1983 Soviet nuclear false alarm incident. Huh. Have y'all heard of this? Have you seen this? Have you heard uh, about this? It doesn't ring a bell. No. 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 Uh, it was, was it the TV show Chernobyl? No, different. It was not that. The The Soviets had all kinds of issues with potential nuclear things. Um, so, here's the story. On September 26, 1983... Three weeks after the Soviet military had shot down Korean Airlines Flight 007, Petrov, our guy, Stanislav, was the duty officer at the command center for the OCO Nuclear Early Warning System. And the system, this nuclear early warning system that the Soviets had set up to let them know if anybody fires a nuclear weapon at their country, okay, reported to Stanis Stanislav Petrov and everyone who had access to it that... A missile had been launched from the United States, followed by up to five more. So Stanislav is sitting there at his desk. He's, this is his job, to monitor this computer and to make sure that no nuclear missiles fly towards his country. And suddenly he sees that there are not just one, but potentially five or six missiles headed towards his country. So, Stanislav Petrov is now in the position to report this and cause an all-out nuclear war to break out. But he judges the reports to be a false alarm, and he makes a decision to disobey orders against Soviet military protocol, and as a result was credited with preventing an erroneous retaliatory attack, nuclear attack, on the United States and its NATO allies that could have resulted in a large-scale nuclear war, uh, frankly, that could have ended the world. And the investigation later confirmed that the Soviet satellite warning system that said, hey, five missiles are headed towards uh, the USSR, Yeah, it had malfunctioned. In, in, in terms of, uh, there was some kind of weird fucking, uh, no missiles were approaching. The computer detecting detection system was malfunctioning. It had been given a false alarm created by a rare alignment of sunlight on high-altitude clouds above North Dakota. Oh, wow. So it was like a Matthew Broderick War Games type situation. Yes. Yeah. Like, just Mother Nature was like, we're going to see how, how, how badly we can fuck these people up. That's crazy. So essentially, this guy became the boy who cried wolf. No, he saved the world. He, got, give, he was given an, a nuclear alarm that should have caused the USSR to retaliate and start firing nukes off at the U.S. and oh, God okay. knows where I, else. I got you, yeah. And instead, he, didn't, he, knew, he recognized it as false. He saw that this was probably a, a mistake or some kind of error. And he saved the world. Oh, shit, he's a savior. Stanislav Petrov is a dude who saved the world at one point and is not credited. And if you're he never wondering... never got, like, a Nobel Peace Prize? Or if, if you're wondering, like, what is this? What is this? pat on the back? If not for Stanislav Petrov, there wouldn't have been any more Christmases. So this for sure fits into the Christmas theme of the episode. Santa would have been dust if not for him. <laughs> so let's put him on the Mount Rushmore of Christmas. Seriously. Be right next to Rudolph. And the thing is, he took heat for this, by the way. This was not like, oh, he saved the world and everybody was on his dick for the rest of his life, which is part of the reason we've never heard of the guy. Because uh, according to the permanent... I'm just going to keep going through the facts of what happened here. According to the permanent mission of the Russian Federation to the UN, nuclear retaliation requires that multiple sources confirm an attack. In any case, this incident exposed a serious flaw in the Soviet early warning system. Petrov has said that he was neither rewarded nor punished for his actions, which you wonder, well, why would you be punished? Well, in Mother Russia, everything is backwards, right. and that's how it goes. Not anymore, but it will, well, you know, right. I'm sure it's not yeah. perfect, but 
it was a lot worse back when when the Soviet Union when Union was running things. Yeah, this was eighty three. Uh, Rocky hadn't even gone over there and united the U.S. and Russia yet. So. It was still big problems. Yeah. yeah. Um, by the way, if you've never watched Chernobyl on HBO, it ended up being my number one show of 2019. Wow. On Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, it ended up taking my number one spot. It's just some of the craziest shit you'll ever see. It's it's it's. Well, what's even crazier is it's all true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it actually it, happened. And, and it's a yeah. story about guy, men sacrificing their lives for others. That's and, the story. And Russia still denies it, that... It yeah. was their fault. And, and that, that it went it the happened. way it did. Yeah. They were very upset by the HBO show, right. Chernobyl, and uh, were at one point making their own version of it to like <laughs> right. retell yeah. how it was actually our fault, yeah. the Americas. Um, I want to see is, that version. Which I, So do I. It sounds like a fucking great movie. Like, what yeah. are we, I'm curious how we pulled this off. Um, had Petrov reported incoming American missiles, his superiors would likely have launched an assault against the United States, uh, precipitating a corresponding nuclear response from the United States, which then would have resulted in just missiles flying. You know the thing you see in movies. It's yeah, the, no, yeah, War, missiles, World War Three. Yeah, 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 missiles flying all over the place. Um, what, is, <laughs> what is the name of that video? Uh, what fires and missiles? But I'm lit tired. Didn't have a nap. Did fires and missiles? Do you remember that? Y'all remember that YouTube video? No. What the fuck was that called? <laughs> YouTube video. End of the world. Please be all I needed to Google for the love of God. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's End of the World. It was from albinoblacksheep.com in 2003. Ah, I remember those guys. Everybody remembers this callback to this random YouTube video that I'm now bringing up for no fucking apparent reason. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, 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 it's crazy to me that this was determined. It was determined that this was caused by a rare alignment of sunlight on high-altitude clouds that nearly destroyed the world, and that this one guy being like, wait a minute was essentially the difference between all-out nuclear war and uh, just a simple false alarm that Art. then caused their systems to be... Life is precious, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what? God. But that's a little bit too precious. Yeah. Like, we need more We need more buffer between me and the end yes. than just Stanislav just, Petrov just sitting Stannis. at his desk. Yeah, Stanis going, I think that's wrong. He's like, wait a minute. Yeah. He's like, you know what? There's an off chance there could be some funky clouds in North Dakota. I'm going to look into this. Yeah. I'm gonna look into if this. If Stannis hadn't had his coffee that morning, we'd all be dead. If he had just been like, you know what? He was, a, he was eating a bowl he's of Porsche. Yeah, he's in a bad mood. You know what? Fuck yeah. it. Fuck just it. Picks up the phone. I'm done. The uh, missiles are coming. Yeah. I'm done. Also, it turns out they said that the red button, you know, like the famous red button you always see pictured in uh, in nuclear scenarios, yeah, like to fire. Apparently, the red button in Russia was never actually hooked up because they didn't want. Uh, the decision about a nuclear war put into the hands of one single person, and Petrov is the guy who stated that the famous red button was never actually made operational. Oh, wow. Which is kind of funny. I thought you were going to say the red button is blue because everything's reverse in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> no. But what if there was a red button and you had control over it? They had you one. You could hang that over everyone's head forever. It's even funnier. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> it's even funnier I'll, I'll to think it. about the guy who had to t make the, gra the gravity uh, decision. Weird wording. Of hitting that red button and then like nothing happens. You could like tease it, like rub your finger around it, like I'm gonna push it. <laughs> this is fucked. Why I'll is anything it. happening? Why aren't the <laughs> missiles shooting? And then another Russian comes in and goes, "In Mother Russia, button was never made operational. <laughs> <laughs> button push you. There you yeah, go. There it that's is. That's it. What the fuck? Um. Anyway, shouts to Stanis, our boy Stanislav Petrov, uh, for saving Christmas for all of us. A true hero. He received no reward. Because the incident and other bugs found in the missile detection system embarrassed his superiors and the scientists who were, were responsible for it. This was like the main problem with the USSR and is a really big problem in a lot of organizations. People at the top in power refusing to acknowledge mistakes or refusing to acknowledge that they could have ever made a mistake in the first place, which was a lot of what happened at Chernobyl as well. Um, hey, you know what, Ross? Yeah. Let's give let's give him an award right now. Okay, he can be the first recipient of the RBP Humanitarian Award. Oh wow, he's yeah, our we're first. We're gonna give that to him. This yeah. is our version of the Nobel Peace Prize. It holds a lot of weight, and we're giving it to him. It's post, also non-existent. Posthumously, 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 as he is as he has passed away in 2017, he was actually reassigned to a less sensitive post and took an early retirement. He was basically forced out of the army, and then he suffered a nervous breakdown. So the wow. guy saved the world, yeah. and then the government in Russia shit all over him. He underwent intense questioning by his superiors about his judgment, initially being praised for his decision, and then they tried to flip it on him, and 
It, it just, it, the whole thing was a goddamn, it was a mess. They promised him a reward. He was never given one. He was also reprimanded for improper filing of paperwork because he had not described the incident in the war diary. I don't, I don't, Russia, Russia, USSR Russia was a total fuck fest. They needed, that thing needed to be shut down. And it was. Thank you to uh, Stanislav Petrov for saving Christmas. Respect, Mr. Petrov. Next segment. Top 10 Christmas movies of all time. Ooh. Hey, a real Christmas segment now for realsies. It's going to be controversial. Fun, fun. You know what's crazy? Better, huh? We did this segment, Top 10 Christmas movies of all time. Yeah. On our first ever episode of this show. Oh, really? RBP 1. It was around Christmas? It, I don't know. It Maybe? Had, had to have been. Uh, otherwise, why would you be talking about Christmas movies? Ross really likes Christmas. <laughs> it was June, and we did my top ten Christmas movies <laughs> oh, for the no, first episode of the show. Do, you can't do that, man. No, so I figure enough time has passed. You know, oh, first of all, by the way, you can't even go listen to episode one on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts anymore because they only hold 250 episodes, it turns out. So we're, every time we put out a new one, one's getting bumped off, which is fucking oh, wow. bizarre. Yeah. Oh, so all of the old episodes, as, from here on, as, as we go, bigger, the old ones are getting... They will get bumped off. Okay. Isn't that fucked up? They're still on SoundCloud. You can go listen to them on soundcloud.com slash... I don't okay, know. Okay, I mean, as long as they still yeah, live yeah. there. But it's just odd that you cannot find episodes one through, I think it's five now, as of Saturday, on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. But I did this very segment on the first ever episode of this show... Um, well, that and means we can rehash it now exactly. because the episode is no longer... It's not available, and enough time has passed, so I figure, well, we hey... We can do this every year, really. We'll run it back. And Honestly, yeah, it's, it's a it's constant... We can do it again in June. Sure, and we'll do it again in June, as is tradition, at uh, half Christmas. Um, so I'm going to give you my top ten, in order, from ten to one Christmas movies, okay? And then I'm going to give you my honorable mentions, and we can kind of debate. Yeah, and I'll chime and in. You, yeah, chime with in with thoughts. your faves that you that may not be mentioned, or that maybe well, you hate one of these. Well, let I'll, let you, I'll let you put out the entire list first before I say anything, because there might be something in there that's like... You fair know, enough, fair enough. So I'll so, just let you... Here's my 2019 version of top 10 Christmas movies of all time, starting with number 10, Elf. And I'm going to be real with you. Elf, I don't think it used to be on my top 10. Elf is one of those movies that people overhyped and ruined for me. Until I got past that, I couldn't appreciate it for myself. Same. And I it's just same. now got past it this year, basically. Mm-hmm. So many quotable lines in that movie. And it's not just great acting. It's an incredibly it's Ferrell, well-cast, you know? good movie. Will Ferrell you can't is, go wrong with the Will Ferrell He's movie. one of the goats. Yeah. And it's Elf was shit on by other people for me. Other people over-praising Elf messed it up. It has only just now gotten into my top ten. Um, and frankly, that's largely as a result of good of a lack of good competition. You know, I've always wondered how he did that scene where he ate like the entire bowl of a, uh, I guess, candy and spaghetti with the chocolate syrup on it. I wonder how many takes he had to do with that. I'm just sure that... shoving, <laughs> just shoving all that sugar into his mouth because it makes you want to vomit. Yeah, just even watching him, it was like the grossest concoction. Yeah. So Elf is my number ten, and it just now got in there. My number nine is How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the 1967 cartoon. The cartoon version, you know, it's on TV every year or whatever. Yeah. It's like the one I grew up watching. Um, the Jim Carrey Grinch is cool, but the Grinch, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, will always be the original Grinch to me. And I love the old school cartoon. And then my number eight is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer in a similar vein. It's one that I grew up with. Sure, yeah. The nine, it, it came out in the 50s or 60s, that claymation movie. And there's just something about every year it's on those whack-ass like Hallmark or shitty channels on TV. Like PBS. Yeah, and you can go watch it and sort of get back in the zone. And it's one of those things as an adult, you know, based on what we spoke to at the top of the show, you need a little bit more to kick you into the Christmas spirit. These movies, with their nostalgia effect, can be super helpful. So that's my number uh, eight, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. My number nine stars Rat Bastard Tim Allen, and it's the Santa Claus. I don't know if I can agree with that one. It's a great movie, AJ. Great Christmas movie. No, we don't support that, man. It just happens to be starring a total and utter clown. Now, here's my logic. People are going to come at your neck for that, man. We punish the rest of the Santa Claus cast because of one Tim Allen's rat bastard motives? I forgot who else was in the cast. I don't know. Nobody of importance. Anybody noteworthy? There you go, David Krumholtz. Noted actor. Now he's a rat by association. I don't see. That's not fair. Has he ever been questioned by the FBI? That's good. He should be. <laughs> or the entire home improvement Krumholtz, cast. Like everybody, the, the FBI just go through all of them. Everybody with an association to Tim Allen has to Taylor be dragged Thomas. in. The Santa Claus was good enough 
and the 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 Tim Allen being a rat bastard thing is um, funny enough to me that this movie still maintains its slot. And not only does it maintain it, it maintains number seven. So it's up there. It's not like it's ten. You know. I mean, the Santa Claus one is inarguably a phenomenal Christmas movie. It just happens to star a rat. And that's where it gets weird for me. It's like, if Takashi stars in the next great Christmas film, will I support it? I mean, if it's a good movie, then... See? I mean, uh, he could be an incredible actor, for all we know. We don't know. You stupid, I'm not going to let you get the (laughs) chance. Um, I'm the Santa Claus now. (laughs) Number six, Home Alone. (laughs) Slash Home Alone 2. That's is one movie. Uh, I'm putting okay. them in one spot, man. This I can't fuck. Look, Home Alone. You already 2, knew what I was about to say. I love Home Alone One, the OG. Home Alone Two. I love the New York stuff. I'm just gonna sure. put them in one slot. Okay. I don't. I don't like fucking with multiple slots with the same franchise. So my number six is Home Alone. Home Alone Two. My number five. Let's get into my top five. Bad Santa is my uh, five. Love it. Love that Absolutely movie. Absolutely adore Bad Santa. Some people don't like it. Barrett, my co-host on Oysters, Clams, and Cockles. Um, actually went to make the point that he does not like this movie at all. Yeah, I don't like it either. Doesn't like Biggie, Billy Bob Thornton. You don't like... Do you, okay, so why? It's so For the funny. same reason, uh, I just Billy don't Bob like, Thornton. Yeah, I'm not a fan of him. He rubs people the wrong way. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. My wife hates him, doesn't Dude. like it. But that movie is just genuinely funny. Of all those bad movies, like Bad Moms this is or the Bad good Teachers, one. this is a good one. Yeah. It's, this is a very, very funny movie. Now, the essential plot and premise is that Santa is a degenerate alcoholic scumbag and that's hilarious. That but it drew, takes it to the next. To it it yeah, gets really concept. like Dude. dark, and people die. But it Dude. and the tone is like almost a drama. Sometimes it's a weird movie, <laughs> but it's incredibly well acted it's and good. well made, and it's heartwarming. You kids want some sandwiches? The the fucking the little boy, the fat kid, is the fucking bomb. I yeah, love that he's, kid. he's great. The grandma is Granny Spry. Dude, there's just oh, so yeah. many good lines in them. That. That's one of the funniest movies in you the world. You want the sequel, by the way? Fuck no. I do not ruin my good movies with bad sequels. Have not seen the sequel. It looks bad. Fuck no. Absolutely not. And I actually heard it wasn't that bad, and I still don't care. I'll never watch it. Number five, Bad Santa. If you don't have bad... If you've never seen Bad Santa, and you don't hate Billy Bob Thornton already, go watch it. You got to make sweet love to Angelina Jolie. Yes. You won't forget that. (laughs) Yes. Hey. One of the most beautiful women on the planet. Respect. Yeah. Billy Bob Thornton, he respect. It, he did it. He pulled it He was it off. enough of a bad boy to catch Angelina in her bad girl phase and get her to wear a vial of blood around her neck. Yeah. His blood. Yeah. That's some real shit. <laughs> Quote from That's Bad a... Santa, you're an emotional fucking cripple. Your soul is dog shit. Every single fucking thing about you is ugly. <laughs> and that's that's the little that's the little person talking yeah, yeah. to him yeah right an emotional fucking cripple <laughs> i mean dude it is it gets into like he's he's essentially the most broken man on earth right yeah and then this story of chris uh, attempting a christmas robbery and and is a redemption story he does become like a good person yes kind he of does sort of kind he just becomes, kind of he becomes a slightly he's still better a drunk. version of himself he's a fucking mess but he becomes he, he, he develops a a uh, conscience. conscience, yes, yeah, that's, that's what he does. Put it. That's what he does. Fuck for me Santa, for fuck two me Santa, people fuck me in the world, yeah. yes, fuck me, Santa. Uh, number four, Christmas Story, yeah, and this sure, is of course this is a nostalgia one for me, AJ. It's the, it's the my dad makes us put it on for twenty four hours every Christmas. On you know how they do the marathon, yeah. Uh, look, it's a great movie. I love it. It's more of a nostalgia thing than anything. It still gets into my top five because it's that much of a classic. At this point, it's more of just like a background viewing. Like you play yes. it during Christmas. Yep. It's just and you on. let it roll. You just you, let it roll, you carry baby. Carry on your your Christmas activities, you and that movie's just playing in the background. Open your presents. Let the movie roll in the background. Bumpuses, sons of bitches. <laughs> um, also, Christmas Vacation is my number three. Ah, great movie. Chevy Chase, the classic, uh, the blessing. It's an. Uh, this is just. It's one of the funniest movies of all time, and it has everything you want in a Christmas movie. And it's Chevy Chase in his prime. Which Chevy had in his prime was inarguably one of the funniest people to ever watch the face. Oh, he had it. hits. He, bro, he put out. He had some hits. Yes, on the level with all the guys we talk about. Yeah, with Adam Sandler, with oh, Chris de- oh, Farley. Definitely. He's he, the one that paved the way for yes, all of them. Yes, absolutely. That's fair to say. He's the OG. Chevy Chase was pre the guys that I look at. Yeah. As the legends that like set the stage for all the things that I believe to be funny. Yeah. And he was before that. And now he's old as fuck and possibly you can even racist. Throw, you but... can even, since we're speaking about that, you can even throw like Rodney Dangerfield and Steve Martin in that same category. Oh, sure. There's a, there's a, there's a whole bunch of legends back there. But Chevy was one that was like, 
I thought he was funny personally. For sure, dude. He sh- he he shaped. I feel like yeah. Chevy Chase deserves a lot of credit for shaping my dad's sense of humor, which then shaped mine. He he had like the perfect balance of like slapstick humor, but like sarcasm. And, and he was like, also good looking enough to yeah. where it was like that's a weird element for 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 comedians. Like being handsome or sexy doesn't play typically. You have to find a way to make it work. Like Chevy found a way. Yeah. He had that element of cockiness to him, but it was always like. He was better than you and funnier than you. I don't know. He but was you're just like, so oh, he's a good looking guy, you know. He looks like, and he was just nice enough. You do drugs, Danny? Yeah. Every single day. Um, so that's my number three. Christmas vacation that's is a good one. dude. The whole family shows up. The part where he gets there's so many classic scenes. The part where he gets locked in the fucking freezing ass attic, watching the old clips of his family and shit. Shitter's full. <laughs> Shitter's full. <laughs> fucking that dude is inc- just just. He's like <laughs> he gives him a list, a Christmas list. To shop for his family to Clark, right? <laughs> and then he says, and you know what, Clark? Why don't you get yourself something real nice, Clark? Get yourself something. <laughs> he's paying for all the stuff. But of course he's going to get himself something. What is that guy's name? What is the uh, character? Randy Quaid? Yeah, but Uncle. No, like oh, Cousin. Actual, um, cousin Eddie. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. yeah. Cousin Eddie is next level shit, man. Drinking eggnog out of the fucking. <laughs> he's, dude, he's yeah, unbelievable. He's I come on, watch that again. I'm going to watch it this year for sure. Oh, yeah. Me every, too. every one of my top five, I've already gotten through Home Alone 1 and 2. Have um, you already started working your way through yep, this list? Every year, dude. Every single year. And the Muppet Christmas Carol is always my Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. And then I'll, I'll get through all. I'll get through all these shits during the Christmas well, season. Let me ask you this. Do you have like a certain protocol or the way, a way like that you like to watch these movies? Or like a certain setup, or you like to nah, have other like than some Christmas cookies, or like a, the my, where, where okay, Santa I'll give hat. you my one that I do have a specific need for is the one we've already touched a Christmas story where Christmas morning my family the way we do it is we eat breakfast to, my dad cooks a big breakfast with like scrambled eggs and bacon and sausage and shit yeah. green eggs and ham no nah, no green eggs and like ham. festive um I, I wish. Um, but we we have a big breakfast and we watch the movie while we have that big breakfast and then we get into the presents and that's sort of like that's just sort of a tradition that's just sort of a pe- but other than that nah there's not and and the fact that I like to save the Muppet Christmas Carol which is my number one we're about to get to it's, everybody knows this is my number one every year um, and it's arguably one of the greatest movies ever made not just Christmas movies the Muppet Christmas Carol. I save that one as long as I can. Give you, for instance, this year I have not watched it yet, and it is December twenty third. So I've made it a very d- much deeper run into December than I normally do for the Muppet Christmas Carol. When are you gonna When are you gonna pull trig? Man, it might be tonight. It's hard tonight. to say. Shouts to circling back. It's hard to say. I don't know. Might be tomorrow. You know what movie I might watch tonight? It's hmm. not even a Christmas movie, but I think I want to watch Parasite tonight. I keep teasing it. Dude, it's so good. You got to watch it. I don't it. know if that's going to ruin Christmas for me if, no. I, if I watch it. Uh, no, nah, man. It's, I think it's got good lessons in it. It's oh, very, okay. it really entertaining. And it's yeah. incredibly well done, yeah. Um, it's a Wonderful Life is my number two. Okay, sure. Some people don't like It's a Wonderful Life. I like it. I like the, the meaning. Cause if I you, like the lesson that you learn. Yes, if you watch movie. this movie, and by the end of it, you don't feel like, Damn. You know, we're lucky to be here. Yeah. I'm lucky to have anything. Well, it kind of ties back to what we started off the yes, show with. Yes, it absolutely does. Yeah. No, and it's... It, it, Counting all, your blessings. And it's a fun... There's funny scenes. It's old school. It's black and white. There's the, there's incredible acting. By the it's way, just, I'm not opposed to black and white movies. I'll watch a black and white movie. I will, too. They're tougher. They're very difficult to pull off. You ever I mean, watch, like, old uh, Alfred Hitchcock movies? Yeah. See, They're good. They're some of them are really good, good, but sometimes, that's what I mean. Actually, you know what? That's probably the most black He's and the white. the king of suspense. Dude. He was also psychotic. Yeah. But many people were, and are. Dozens of us. In this room. In this room, even. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, It's a Wonderful Life, man. It's That's that's why, though. There's I don't think more than any other Christmas movie... When you watch It's a Wonderful Life and that movie comes to an end and you've watched it in its entirety and paid attention, you get what Christmas is all about. Yeah, I feel good when I finish watching it. Right? I'm like, oh, that's- And very difficult to pull off, like, the lessons in, in all, I mean, a lot of these good movies. A lot of these good Christmas movies, and one, the thing they have in common is they pull off the lessons that I want, the things that Christmas means to me, yeah. without actually touching on religion. Which oh, is, yeah. I never which is thought interesting. About that, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They it's ne- kind of hard not to do that. Right? Christmas because as a holiday. Christmas, you think of Jesus. Yeah. Jesus Christ's birthday, right? Yeah. Um, but none of these movies get into any of that. But 
more than any of them, It's a Wonderful Life gives you, I believe, the lessons that you need to be taken away from all that shit without actually touching on any of it, which has always just been interesting to me. And then as I said, Muppet Christmas Carol, my all-time number one. It's not a joke. It's not a gimmick. It is legitimately the best Christmas movie ever made to me and is one of the best movies ever made, period. Period. Which I, I understand it's not for everybody. I like it. I like the original Muppet movie. Michael Caine. Uh, in terms of Muppet movies. Um, the one from I'm, the 70s or early yeah, 80s. Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a Muppet Treasure Island guy. Mm-hmm. After Muppet Christmas Carol, Muppet Treasure Island is my other Muppet movie. It's also phenomenal. Um, it, it takes a good actor, human, to dominate to make a, good, a great Muppet movie. Yeah. And Michael Caine dominates Muppet Christmas Carol... Michael Caine, one of the great um, actors. Some men just want to watch the world burn. He's in, he's incredible as Alfred. Mm-hmm. Go watch Muppet Christmas Carol. Michael Caine, Michael Caine is the greatest. And Muppet Christmas Carol is the greatest. My honorable mentions quickly. The Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. It stays on there, but it's a Halloween movie too. I can't put it on my top ten. A Charlie Brown Christmas. Mm-hmm. The nostalgia factor. Right. Here's two that I put into one category similar to Home Alone and Home Alone 2 and they're not sequels. Love Actually, and The Holiday. Oh, those are both really good movies. Chick flicks. Yeah. Phenomenal. No, the, the Holiday is great. Jack Black? Highly underrated. You got to see him in a totally different light. Did you see the other day he did an interview where he forgot he did The Holiday? They're asking <laughs> him what his favorite Christmas movies are. Is it the one where he like recaps all of his movies? and like? No, he's on a red carpet doing promo for, uh, what, what is it, Jumanji, Jumanji 4 yeah, or whatever. That's the new movie that came out. By the way, they make like $100 billion off each one of those movies. No, I don't know who goes to well, see Well, that's him. why they keep making them. I is watched that... him for Karen Gillan. Did you really? For Karen Gillan. You know Karen Gillan. The right? redhead Fuck in the movie. Karen Gillen. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah She's yeah. from Doctor Who. Okay, well, yeah, they, they keep, also those Guardians are the similar galaxy. to like the Adam Sandler, yeah, those are similar to the Adam Sandler shit, though, where like, they come out and everybody's like, these are trash, right? And, yeah. and, and you don't even think about it again, but then it makes $200 million and you're confused. The kids well, you like have them. like some of the biggest actors on the planet. Yeah. Yeah, no, Kevin Hart, The Rock. Anyway, he was on a red carpet doing an interview and they're asking him about his favorite Christmas movies. And, and he's like sort of, you can, you can tell he doesn't really know why she's asking him. And then she's like, she has to bring it up. The interviewer is like, you're not going to say the holiday? He's like, oh, oh the holiday. I <laughs> yeah, did the that holiday. I was in the yeah. holiday. Yeah, oh, fuck. Yeah, that's one of my faves for sure. It's just kind of funny. He completely yeah. fucking forgot. Phenomenal movies, Love Actually and The Holiday. Classic, classic Christmas films. By the way, at some point in the future, we should do a, a Jack Black segment. That would be good. Um, Jack actually, Black reached, appreciation. I reached out to him no for, shit. For, for an interview. Yeah, he's, he'll be a tough one, but that'd be incredible. Dude, that'd be he, fun, though. He's he, one, he, has, he has some hits that people don't even like to talk about. The really. longevity of his career yeah. is, isn't is talked about as much as it should be. Jack I Black think, I think that'd been, be a fun little, uh, you know, just segment. Absolutely. Just legendary to, comedian from back since, uh, not even a comedian, just a funny person. Yeah. Since back D. when I was a little kid. Tenacious D. Talented musician. Talented singer. and hilarious. Yeah. And uh, he's very well-rounded. But we'll have to show up. We, if we decide to do a segment later, that'd be a fun one to do. Like if Jamie Foxx was white and portly and not as handsome. It's a good, it's a good way to put it. Sure. That's, that's Jack Black. <laughs> sure. Right? No? Just Friends. I'm putting it on my honorable mentions. I don't give a shit if I don't count it as a Christmas movie. It's Ryan not a Reynolds. Christmas movie. It's still f- phenomenal, but it's, I, it's on my Christmas Ryan, movie. I got, I got some mentions. thoughts about these. I'll let you finish going through that. So yeah. I don't, don't want to derail My it. last one's Trading Places, also not a Christmas movie. It's a great movie. Uh, but a great movie. Frosty the Snowman All right. is the old school one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Four Christmases is another one that's more recent. That's a what fun, is that? It's uh, it's the one about it's with Vince Vaughn and Reese Witherspoon. Yeah, they go oh, okay. to all the different Christmases, oh, okay. and each one of them is fucking chaos and hilarious. It's, it's actually a really, really funny movie. It's a great movie. I enjoyed it a lot. Good family lessons and shit too. And then uh, obviously Krampus is in there as well as an honorable <laughs> mention. I still haven't watched Krampus. Yeah, but Krampus, I like it's fun. Is credited everywhere People as like being a good Christmas movie. Yeah, it's fun. If you go look up any top twenty-five Christmas movie list, you're gonna see Krampus on that shit now, which is crazy. Because it's a, it's a Christmas the one, horror movie. The one with Adam Scott. Yeah. Krampus. I mean, that's one that you watch Christmas night, obviously. So have you seen Krampus? I've seen bits and pieces, but I've never sat through the entire thing. You've seen Krampus? Yeah, it's fun. i got to watch Krampus, a lot of fun. I guess. So that's m- my list, AJ. What are your thoughts on my list? So first off, Just Friends is actually my favorite holiday movie. Okay. I, I would actually put that in my number one spot. Wow. And, and bump out the Muppets movie. Wow. In my okay. opinion. Okay. 
Dude, there's something about Just Friends. Dude, it's such it, a funny it's, movie. It's a hilarious movie. Like, I just No don't... matter how many times I watch it, dude, I die every time. It's more of a love story than a Christmas movie. He's playing me. hockey with the kids. Dude. And he nails himself in the face of the hockey puck. <laughs> the fucking guy comes in and puts him on the stretcher to take his ass out of there after he takes a hockey puck to the mouth. <laughs> Yeah. And then drops him, and he slides. And not only does he slide like 100 feet and then fly up in the air, the thing flips over and lands so that yeah. he's face down on the ice. His mom is like this sweet, naive old lady. Be yourself. And just like the the, Be the, the whole dynamic with him and his little brother, man. it's just You can relate to that. And Anna Ferris is hot as shit in that movie. It's before she like went and fucked her face up. Yeah, she's yeah she's smoking this. <laughs> she did fuck her face up. Yeah, that's you don't fuck with your face, yeah, yeah, yeah. people. The only thing I would add to this list, uh, if it were me, my uh-huh. number one is Scrooged with Bill Murray. Oh, that's, hey, that's a really good movie. Yeah. We forgot all about that. Yeah, one. I'll put that on my honorable mention. Scrooge. That's, that's, that's a really good one. Bill Murray is a god, and, and and Scrooged is a good Christmas classic. It's just it's one for me that like I saw like once when I was a kid, and like never went back for some reason. Oh, but you got to watch it as great. an adult. There's okay. lots of like nuanced, adult, adult nuanced jokes. humor in there. Yeah, okay. you know, I'll, I'll bump Trading Places into the top ten also. See, that's one where I don't count that, it. Some, it's not super Christmasy, you don't cons- though. You don't consider that? The, le- just, the lesson is very holiday-themed. Yeah, and it's during and it Christmas. Place, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It takes place during Christmas. But this is where you get, like, the strict, like, this is the Die Hard thing, right? Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Fuck yeah. no. Just because it takes place during Christmas does not make it a Christmas movie, which is why, again, I say, for me, just friends and trading places don't count. They're just on my honorable mentions. But just because they don't count for me doesn't mean they can't count for you. You can put them in your top ten all day, baby. Do your thing. I'll also... Swap out the Grinch. I'll swap out your version of the Grinch with, with your the Jim version. Carrey version of the Grinch. Fair enough. Um, I respect that move. I know you love that movie too. You can't tell me you didn't. Enjoy no, I do, it. man. I love Jim Carrey, and I thought he did a great job. But there's something about the OG and that nostalgia factor that I, I watched it so many times in December as a child that it just it carries more weight. Yeah. Yeah. Any others we want to get mentioned? Real quick, 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um. And then, of course, like I said, Krampus. Can't forget Krampus. Krampus. And those are my top ten. Elf, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, The Santa Claus, Home Alone, Home Alone 2, Bad Santa, Christmas Story, Christmas Vacation, It's a Wonderful Life, and then number one, as always and forever, The Muppet Christmas Carol. RBP 252 is also brought to you by Bespoke Post. This fall, start a new monthly routine that will upgrade your life and style with a box of awesome from Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post sends guys only the best stuff Every month, so whether you're looking to craft your own hard cider or toast perfectly aged cocktails, Box of Awesome has you covered from style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, outdoor gear. Box of Awesome has carefully built collections for every part of your life. Uh, my favorite available right now on Bespoke Post is probably the Toast Box with the 10 Cigar Humidor, the Good Cigar Pack, and a Leather Cigar Pouch. That's man shit right there. Man shit only. All you have to do to get started is go take a quiz. Very short, very quick, very helpful. Boxofawesome.com. Short quiz. Your answers will help you pick, help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up. You can skip a month or cancel at any time. Each box only costs 45 bucks, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. You get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code RBP at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code RBP, for 20% off your first box. Next segment, respect the year of the sock. <laughs> so as 2020 approaches and we start to debate what 2020 should be the year of, Let us not forget that 2019 was the year of the sock. Many people have said to me, Ross, the year of the sock feels like it was a bit of a bust. Listen, with the year of the robe, we had to talk about it more often because dudes like Harvey Weinstein were actively destroying and besmirching the good name of the robe. With the year of the sock, we've kind of stayed winning the entire time. I mean, we got Stance as a fucking sponsor a couple months into the year, and it was all over from there. Stance.com slash Ross. Free pair of Stance socks with purchase. Um... I mean, we've had slides celebrating the year of the sock on our Instagram story every single day. And I've purchased roughly 50 pairs of socks this year and anticipate receiving at least five more pairs of stance socks during Christmas. So the year of the sock, for me, couldn't have been more successful. Like, do you follow me on Instagram? You see my shoes with stance socks every single day, fam. Every single fucking day. Socks. So hot right now. Never been hotter. Year of the Socks was a rousing success, and anyone who tries to tell you otherwise wears Crocs. 2020 will not be the year of the Croc. I can tell you that right now. Never. No. Many people, oddly, have asked me that boots get respect. 
They're asking for the year of the boot. Nah, I don't think that's going to work. A lot of Texans in that group asking for it. But yeah, listen, I've never been a big boot guy on that level, like cowboy boots or whatever. If you're one of the many people listening um, who thinks everyone in Texas, aside from me, dresses like a cowboy and rides horses to school with their six shooters, you're spot on. But in all seriousness, I have one pair of nice boots for when my Texan friends get married at fancy places and demand black tie. And then I have one pair for, like, riding horses when my in-laws force me to go to Montana with the fucking flu. And that's it. I don't wear them any other time. Those are the two reasons. But that being said, I respect boots. I get it. I, I can see you pulling off a nice pair of Chelsea boots, though. Sure. I've got nothing against cowboy boots. But they're also kind of silly as shit and hilarious when you think about it. Unless you're actually a cowboy, in which case they're badass. But I just I know too many dudes, clown-ass city slickers from Houston and Dallas, city boys like me, who've been rocking boots their whole life in some sort of misinformed branding effort. And it has destroyed cowboy boots for me, like on a personal level. So I'll be real. Jordans or Yeezys for me, please. Okay, so I don't know. Maybe 2020 is the year of the sneaker. Oh, hey, I'm down for that. Can we go from the sock to the sneaker? We could do one for the ladies, make it the the year of the sports bra. We stay on the foot, though, AJ. I think we have to stay on the feet. Okay. We're a foot fetish podcast after all. By the way, pictures of my feet are $1,000 on Patreon. Uh, DM me for... For info, very quickly, one more thing to talk about before we get out of here today. We've gone way long. RBP merch yes. has arrived. Finally, after many, many years of yating, yating? Excuse me? Waiting. Decades yating. of waiting and yating. Where's the Ross Boland Podcast merchandise has arrived. We're still waiting on a couple boxes that come in Monday before I put stuff up on Patreon next week. But if you were paying on attention on social media over the weekend, you've seen what we have in so far. We are really doing it. Bowling Media is going balls deep into the merch game to end 2019. We got an incredible soft for the weekend design in where the letters in the words soft for the weekend are made of real dog fur. It's a drawing, actually, folks. It's not actually real dog fur. Um, We got hats. (coughs) Excuse me. Hats. Dad (laughs) caps. Come on, man. Dad caps, specifically, um, that say Ross Bowling Podcast and the old school Astroworld design that inspired Travis Scott's use of Astroworld for his album, uh, thus inspiring us to be inspired by his inspiration. The hats are sick. They're black. I gave away like 15 on twitch.tv slash boss rolling while we were streaming this weekend. I'll probably give away some more this afternoon. I actually ended up having to order more hats because I gave away too many. Um, more black hats are coming in. I ordered white Astroworld style RBP dad hats as well. Got those coming in. We also have Astroworld designed shirts in white and black coming in. Stoked for those. That'll all be here Monday. The RBP drip shirt. I'm actually wearing one of right now oh look at if that. you're on twitch this shirt actually i stole this shirt nice. from frank um but if you're on twitch i'm wearing the rbp one right now and you can see it says rbp at the top and then down from those letters it says uh, ross boland you'll, podcast you'll see a better picture later yeah it's fucking great i love it it's probably my favorite of the ones we have received so far it's a black shirt with white letters or vice versa we offer white as well the rbp with ross boland podcast scroll coming down from those letters uh, my favorite of the shirts that have come in so far. Uh, by the way, if you patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast to watch video of this episode and see me pull up my uh, my hoodie so you can see the shirt. That URL is important, by the way. Patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast because only dues paying members of the RBP gang, people who have pledged the minimum $5 or more to support the show, support the movement, support Boland Media during the months of December and January on patreon.com slash Ross Boland Podcast will even have an opportunity to purchase this merch. Gen Pop gets none of this first batch, unfortunately. Now, this is both to reward those who have been an enormous part of ensuring I can do this show and run this company, Boland Media, and create content for y'all as my primary and main career um, by supporting with monthly pledges on Patreon. It's also to incentivize the rest of you to finally join in. We have still, uh, we have a lot of listeners, okay? Like roughly 50,000 of you download each episode weekly, but we still only have 1,040 of you on Patreon. It's a fantastic start, and I believe that's the highest number of you we've ever had on Patreon all year long, up to 1,040 people right now. So let's get that number up as close, as high as we can to close out 2019. Because remember, the goal, if and when we get to 3,000 patrons, which I know is possible because they're... Uh, comparably sized shows with over 4,000 patrons, over four times us. When we get to 3,000, we're going to do a live recording here in Austin, Texas. Everyone will be invited. We'll do an episode live uh, and have a party, but we got to get there first. Yeah. That'll be fun. We're hovering at 1,000. 
Okay, let's get those numbers up. You get full video of episodes, two additional and exclusive ad-free episodes of RBP each month, exclusive access to RBP merch. This is the best stocking stuff our money can buy for five bucks. You also get the entire backlog of content, everything we posted the entire year from December, from November, October, August, July, June, all the other months. Everything we ever posted on Patreon, you will immediately gain access to when you sign up today. Five bucks, give gifts, give the gift of Patreon uh, to, to everyone in your whole entire family. You just put on a piece of paper. Here's a $5 bill, patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast. The cheapest gift you can give. It's easy as, it's easy as hell. Support the gang, grow the movement, patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast. Merch, fucking video episodes, ton of video episodes. You can't watch those anywhere else right now in 2019. 2019 video only available on patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast. Get in there, get this merch, get those videos, get those two exclusive ad-free episodes every month. Enjoy and support the show. Before you head out to take on the world, some very important announcements. Your legal obligations, you know them. You've heard them all year long. One, rate and review. Two, share the show with one person. Rate and review, you do once, right? Share the show with one person you do every week. I need y'all to help me grow the show going into 2020. You've heard my spiel. It's going to be a big, big, big year for us, make or break. I'm going to aim as high as y'all will allow me to aim with your support. So tell everybody you know about RBP this Christmas. All your friends and family, post on every social media, do everything you can to spread the word about the show. We are genuinely making a difference here also we will be putting together or i will be uh best of episode the best of 2019 a highly shareable episode for anyone that's not familiar with the show they can listen to that and, and they'll get, get an idea the, get some of the best segments that we put out there there you go and get them hooked and you can tell people look it's funny it's informative sometimes it's silly but beneath all that the show really is talking about things that matter we genuinely are both trying and succeeding to a degree um every single week to make a difference in people's lives. As people going through rough patches, people struggling with substance abuse, depression, mental health issues. Uh, I mean, we've had people who have hit me up telling me that they were, you know, that, that, we sa- that this show saved their life, that they were in a, in a suicidal place before and then found RBP and were able to find a community that helped them get out of it. And, like, that's not something that I would bullshit about. That's, that's something that has legitimately happened multiple times people are choosing life because of this community and that's beautiful building this with y'all is uh been been the greatest honor to me the most fun i've ever had and uh this show has saved my own life a couple times minimum so far um so it means a lot to me that y'all are here even listening at all so thank you thank you thank you for supporting throughout 2019 my goal is to make y'all as proud as i can in 2020 um, patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast rate review share the show follow us on Instagram at the Ross Boland podcast on Twitter at Ross Boland pod we're on Facebook if you're the middle aged aunt of one of our listeners you can follow me Ross Boland on Twitter Instagram and Snapchat at W-R-B-O-L-E-N at W-R Boland on Twitter on Instagram on Snapchat at W-R Boland on all three also listen to Oysters, Clams, and Cockles our television and film podcast here at Boland Media hosted by myself and Mr. Barrett Dudley AJ where can we follow you? You on the fo- socials. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at capital AJ. Would you spell it? Yeah, sure. It's C-A-P-I-T-A-L-A-J. Hit me up. Mm. Mr. Mike. Mr. Mike Moody. What about you? Uh, find me on Twitter at Mike Moody and permanent record, permanent R-C-R-D dot com. And that will do it for RBP 252, recorded and produced by Mike Moody and Grant Davis at Permanent Record Studios in Austin, Texas. We'll be back on Friday, actually, for episode 253. Getting at least a couple more in before the end of the year. RBP 253 coming Friday. Podman gets paid. Respect, Mr. Park. Strength and honor. Gang, gang, gang. Merry Christmas to everybody. Enjoy Merry your Christmas. friends and families. Happy be holidays. Safe. For real, for real. Look out for each other. We'll be back Friday. Peace be with you and also with you.